The small size, weight and different mounting brackets for the GoPro allow a lot of creativity with your angles and positioning, especially when filming motorbike riding. In our experience, where you mount your GoPro involves how smooth will the video be, how much sensation of speed you want, the safety of the rider, and of course, the risk of losing or damaging your GoPro. Helmet mounts pretty much always give you the smoothest footage because you not only have your legs acting as extra suspension, but your head naturally counters the rise and fall of the terrain to keep the camera angled correctly. As a rule, the lower your GoPro is mounted, the faster and more immersive the video will be. Mounting on top of your helmet will make things feel slower, flatten the terrain, and can snag on low branches for a nasty surprise. For a long time, we favoured the side mount. The video feels faster, and it can feel very immersive if you catch some of the helmet in the frame as well. It's also easier to hear the audible beep of the camera when turning it on and off. For added interest, the camera can be mounted in reverse too, as with the top mount, and you can put the skeleton door on the back and pick up reasonably good audio when talking. The danger, however, is the GoPro still snagging on passing branches. We used a piece of string as a tether for whenever it fell off. Our favourite position nowadays is under the peak. The camera can't snag on anything. You can hear the camera clearly and also see the red light flashing and you'll immediately notice if the GoPro falls off for any reason. Also, the latest software update automatically corrects the video for the upside down positioning. You can just screw a flat alloy plate to the peak, then stick your GoPro mount on. The main drawback, it's the height. You only occasionally see the handlebars, so the video is not all that immersive and the action looks a bit slower. And of course, the camera may partially block your view until you finish filming and swing it out of the way. Possibly the best position for filming is one that my helmet won't allow easily. Mount the GoPro on the chin bar. The footage is smooth, appears faster, and the clear view of the handlebars gives the rider's perspective very clearly. The chest mount, always a good alternative, the video is very immersive and feels very fast. It won't be as smooth as helmet footage and you can actually point it too low or too high pretty easily because this varies with body positioning and the slopes you're riding. You can always make your own chest mount using the base plate that your new GoPro is attached to. Just buy $5 worth of clips and strapping. Remember, you can mount it backwards and film riders following you too. The boot cam is a little invention of ours. Just stick a GoPro mount on some flattened alloy tubing and slide it inside your boot. This gives a great sensation of speed and action because it's so low. But of course, the footage is rougher as your legs aren't used as extra suspension. Whatever you do, don't leave it in your boot after filming. It very easily gets ripped out by passing plants. You won't notice it's gone. Try the boot cam on both legs and also forwards and backwards. The boot cam is also useful for hand filming others or even yourself when riding. The swivel cam, it's risky and it's heavy, but the swivel cam gives a great perspective to work into your bibs. Just Google do-it-yourself GoPro swivel cam. It works best if you drill a hole into an old helmet, but we are working with a strap-on solution that could be put on anyone's helmet. There are various issues with this design in a dirt riding context, which we'll probably address in an upcoming vid. You can have too much swivel. At times, we just use a piece of elastic to keep the camera in front for a steadier shot. Obviously, it's a risky way to film. We only use this swivel cam for a minute or so at a time and then take it off before we hurt ourselves. Static footage. One of the most neglected mounts, of course, is just standing there and holding the GoPro in your hands. This is great to mix in with your riding footage. Key tips. Remember, you've got a wide angle lens, so you need to get in very close to the action or put your GoPro on the narrow angle setting and hold it very steady. In terms of keeping it steady, 
hold your breath, use both hands, and if possible, tuck your elbows into your stomach to minimize shaking. I carry a little bit of foam around to put over the microphone if it's windy, so you don't get that sound from the wind. Personally, we don't feel like spending the money, but we've seen guys make up their own design for this backpack style approach with alloy tubing or even PVC attached to an old cutting board placed in your backpack. Drones are really taking off, literally. And there are new designs on the way where the drone will automatically follow you along your trail. How cool is that? It's going to be expensive though. Other basic tips, getting the angle of your GoPro can be tricky. Too high and the extra light from the sky makes your footage too dark. Too low of course and you can't see what's coming. You'll get it sorted in time or you can fork out the extra money for the GoPro back screen. As mentioned, always tether your GoPro, even if it's just a piece of string, and put your name, phone number, and email address on your GoPro. There are plenty of honest dirt riders out there who will return it to you if they find it on the trail. We'll leave this spot open for any suggestions you guys might want to add, and at some point we might do a video about actual filming and editing techniques. Happy videoing.